Welcome along to a sunny Silverstone National Circuit for round five of the 2018 Radical SR1 Cup. We come into this weekend with James Pinkerton leading the championship on 147 points. 26 points ahead of Ryan Harper Ellum in second place. Chris Short in third is a further 22 points adrift. In the Fangio Trophy, Peter Devlin has a 15-point lead over David Tagg, with Paul Clark sitting there in third. We caught up with some of the drivers after qualifying. is actually really good. It's it's nice and fast around the corners, moves around a lot, it's a lot of fun. I've upgraded to Gen 2 bodywork for this race uh, and it's paying off. The more I time I'm out there, I find more time. So I've got to keep on building that momentum and looking forward to the next two races. So here's how the grid looks then for race one. Ryan harper and James Pinkerton, the championship rivals on the front row of the grid. Will Hunt and Adash Radia on row number two. It's Julian Lay and Chris Short on row three with Gavin McAlpine and Ross Elliott on row four. And Mark Williams and David Tagg both sit there on row number five. The sixth row of the grid, that's where we see Andrew Ritchie and Richard Wilson. And row number seven is Paul Clark and Peter Devlin. So the car's completing their green flag warming up lap, all safely behind the safety car, ready for this rolling start for round five of the 2018 championship. It's the yellow helmeted Ryan Harper Elam on pole position, the orange crash helmeted James Pinkerton, who has the outside of the front row of the grid, but that actually gives him the inside for the first corner here at Silverstone. You can see the heat haze, what beautiful conditions we've got here in Northamptonshire for round five of the championship. Lights are on and the lights go out. Now we're away and racing. It's a great start from James Pinkerton by the look of things, who's being run side by side with Ryan Harper, but he's got the inside line and they're still side by side as they go through Cops Corner. Great driving from the two guys right at the sharp end of the championship. Ryan harper -Ellum, as you can see, down to second place, but will have opportunities to attack in this 20-minute race. So James Pinkerton leads. Ryan harper -Ellum in second place. Needs to make sure he gets a good run going through this corner here, which is Beckett's. And then you can gear yourself up to get a good run onto the Silverstone National Straight, which is the Wellington Straight. Problems further back by the look of things. Raising the dust is the blue car there. That will be Mark Williams, one of the rookies in the field. As Ryan harper Ellum here jinx out from behind the slipstream of James Peterson, heading up towards Brooklyn's corner, tries to squeeze his way up the inside. There's just a little bit of contact, I think, between the pair. Fair driving from both, but Ryan harper Ellum's now trying around the outside as they go round through Luffield, and they're still side by side. This is just the first lap of the race. Great racing from the pair of them, and Ryan harper Ellum trying to pick the pocket of James Pinkerton, but James Pinkerton having none of it at all. They've both had two wins so far this season. Two for James Pinkerton at the first two rounds at Alton Park. Two for Ryan harper Ellum, who now has the inside line for Cops Corner and goes through to take up the lead of the race. He runs a little bit wide, though, coming out of Cops Corner, and that instantly hands the lead back to James Pinkerton. So, as they were in reality, Pinkerton leads. Ryan harper Ellum there in second place, queuing up behind. There are now cars as a result of this squabble, which includes Will Hunt and the number 23 car of Anish Radia by the look of things. So onto the Wellington straight, they thread their way for the second time. James Pinkerton still hanging on to the lead of the race. Ryan harper Ellum still there in second position. They'll head on to the brakes, turn their way in towards the left-hander at Brooklyn's corner. So still first and second. You can see the gap, though, has just opened out a shade more this time. Look at the fight that's going on for third as well. There's no let-up in the pressure that Adash Radia is applying to Will Hunt. But the leading pair just starting to scamper away a little bit more now as they come over the start-finish line, chalk another lap into the book. The orange-helmeted James Pinkerton leads the race the white car but with the black flashes either side of it is Ryan harper Ellum in second place having won the radical SR1 shootout this year looking to try and see what he might be able to do in this championship he's had two wins he's had a second he had a non-finish however in the first round of the championship up at Alton Park the rest of the field filing their way through back it's good fight going on that's the fight for fourth fifth and sixth place Anish Radia under pressure from the number 52 car of Ross Elliott well Ross has come up from eighth on the grid up into fifth position he's also got behind him the number 11 car of Chris Short so that's one to watch out for as they all squabble away for the last three places inside the top six the leading pair though starting to ever more build the advantage over Will Hunt in third position sweeping their way through the complex through Luffield and then start to accelerate up towards Woodcock corner the final corner here they flat out right hand kink the Suzuki 1340 cc engine working hard to try and keep James Pinkerton in the lead of the race shifting up through the six-speed paddle shift gearbox throw the car in towards Cops corner and you can see there's what half a dozen car lengths between James Pinkerton and Ryan Harper Ellum 
James Pinkerton has yet to finish off the podium so far this year. He's had a couple of wins. He's had a second. He had a third last time out in the second of the two races at Snetterton. He's under pressure. Will Hunt sitting there in third place. Alice Radia in fourth place. Fifth place is Ross Elliott. And there for sixth place now, Chris Short is under pressure from the leading man in the Fangio Cup. And that is the number 44 car of Julian Lay that is right behind him. Trying to get himself up inside the top six here. He gets the slipstream as they head down the Wellington Strait. Jinx out from behind. Can he squeeze his way through? The squabble for the lead of the race all of a sudden has started to close up a little bit more. Ryan Harper Ellum is starting to chip away at very slender advantage that James Pinkerton had. It's come down by, what, a couple of car lengths, I would suggest, as they go over the start-finish line, complete yet another lap here, and James Pinkerton is starting to feel the pressure once more. Further down through the order, there's number 95, David Tag. He's fighting away with Mark Williams, who, of course, had problems down at Beckett's on the first lap, so his light blue car dropped towards the tail end of the field, and he's looking to try and thread his way back up through the order if he can. The race leaders head down towards Maggots and Beckett's in a very sideways moment there for the race leader, James Pinkerson. Just managed to catch the car as he sort of slithered his way through Maggots and then up towards Beckett's. And that is going to compromise the straight line speed of that car heading down the Wellington Strait. Great little fight at the tail end of the field as well. Paul Clark and Peter Devlin all busy squabbling away for the last couple of places. Peter Devlin actually leading the championship standings in the Fangio Trophy currently as we go back on board with second place Ryan Harper-Ellen. Turning his way through Luffield Corner, agonisingly close to race leader James Pinkerton, and he might be able to get a bit of a toe here as they head over the start finish line to start another lap. Here we go, that's right on board. So Ryan Harbrell up close to James Pinkerton for the lead of the race, and now Mark Williams tries to squeeze his way up the inside of David Tagg. Well, there wasn't quite enough room there, and I think Mark Williams decided in time that. Without question, discretion was the better part of valour there. Raise the dust, but the two of them will still roll up their sleeves and still be busy fighting it out, as are the leading pair now. James Pinkerton under enormous pressure from Ryan harper who again closes into the breaking air through Maggots and Beckett. Coming out of here up the Wellington Strait is his best opportunity, as he did earlier on in the race. Pick up the slipstream from the race leader, jink out from behind and see what you might be able to do on the run-up towards Brooklyn's corner. And that is exactly where we're heading now, on board with the second-place car. Onto the brakes, turn the car in towards the left hander. Ryan Harper Ellen working desperately hard to try and take up the lead of the race. Brakes as late as he possibly can, looks to try and sweep his way around the outside of Luffield. That's cost him, if anything, maybe a car length as he looks to try and now pick up the toe as they head up towards Woodcook Corner. Complete one lap, start another, nose to tail for the lead of the race. James Pinkerton continuing to lead. We've still got that battle going on further down through the order as well. David Tagg still looking to hang on to the place that Mark Williams is desperate to try and squeeze his way through. This is for ninth and tenth places in the race by the look of things. Knight still going the way of David Tagg and the race lead still going the way of this man here, James Pinkerton. Despite all of the pressure from Ryan harper Ellum, there's not as yet been a chink in the armour from James Pinkerton. He's thrown pretty much everything at it at this stage and hasn't been able to unlock the door to the lead of the race. Neither has Mark Williams been able to unlock the door to ninth position by the look of things. David Tagg still working desperately hard to try and hang on to the place as Williams jinx one way, then jinx the other. And then they turn their way through Beckett's corner. Great fight all the way down through the order this weekend so far for round five of the 2018 Radical SR1 Cup. Squeeze the accelerator, work that RPE tuned Suzuki engine as hard as you can down the Wellington Strait. Mark Williams still is tucked up behind the Gen 1 car of David Tagg at this stage. David lying second in the Fangio standings coming into this weekend. Mark Williams lying eighth in the overall championship standings. His best finish is a fourth so far this year. Here come our race leading duo once more through Maggots and Beckett's. Here's the third place car, Will Hunt, number 21. Adish Radia still sitting there in fourth place. Ross Elliott in fifth place and sixth place is that car there, number 44, Julian Lay. He will be the leader of the Fangio Trophy at this stage. He's not had a win in the Fangio Trophy so far this year, so for Julian Lay, he'd be delighted if he could also join the top three drivers on the podium. The race leader, James Pinkerton, still pushing on, still having to work those hand-cooked tyres as hard as he possibly can to try and build any sort of a margin between himself and Ryan harper Ellum. For the moment, it looks like Ryan harper Ellum has either taken a breather or maybe James Pinkerton has just opted to push that little bit more because the gap has grown, not by much, still not a lot at all, as you can see as they come over the start-finish line, but it's maybe an extra half a car length to what it was previously. And you can see the gap back to the third-place car, Will Hunt. There he sweeps his way through the right-hander at Cox Corner. A little bit of daylight between himself and the pair that are fighting over fourth and fifth place. 
up towards the breaking area for Maggots and Beckett's come the leading pair. There is our third place car. Look at the fight that's going on for fourth and fifth now as well. The number 52 car of Ross Elliott. Remember, he's come up from eighth on the grid and he's now nipping at the heels of Adash Radia. Adash making his debut in the Radical SR1 Cup this weekend. Used to race caterums and he's now under enormous pressure from Ross Williams, who I'm sure would have been a little bit disappointed with the way qualifying went, but he's making up for it in the race, charging his way in the early stages up through the order, but it's now sort of plateaued and is looking to try and squeeze his way through and ahead of Adish Radia. Sweep their way through Luffield Corner, up towards the conclusion of yet another lap. This, of course, will just allow the car ahead to pull away a bit more. The gap for first to second has come back down again by the look of things. Looks as though Ryan harper -Ellum is looking to try and up the pressure on the race leader. And there goes David Tagg, still with Mark Williams behind him, as yet there's been no way that Mark Williams has been able to squeeze his way through it ahead of David Tagg. David, who's been racing Radical SR1s for a season or so now. So over the start-finish line comes the number 51 car. That's Andrew Ritchie. Then behind him is the fight that we've been talking about. David Tagg busy beavering away to try and keep that blue machine in the hands of Mark Williams behind him. Mark, though, gets a good run heading around through Cops Corner this time. And the slightly newer Gen 2 shape Radical SR2 here might be able to squeeze his way through on the run down towards Maggots and Beckett's corner. So through the left-hand kink at Maggots, up towards the braking area and turn right in towards Beckett's. You can see Mark Williams ever, ever close towards the tail end of David Tagg's car, but despite everything he has done, he's not been able to work his way through as yet. And I think that pair squabbling and now allowing Chris Short to catch up as well. Chris had a spin earlier on in the race. He's charging his way back through the field. Leaders over the start-finish line. Here's the gap back to Will Hunt, who sits there in third place. He's the leading rookie we've got in the field. And fourth now, well, that is not Adash Radia. That is the car of Ross Elliott now, the number 52 car, up into fourth place, which means Adash Radia has dropped down into fifth position somewhere. So he's not that far behind, but certainly there's been a change of order there. So from eighth on the grid, up to fourth now for Ross Elliott. Race leaders, though, turning their way through Brooklyn's corner, still with James Pinkerton in the lead of the race. Ryan harper Ellen still there in second position at the wheel of the number 79 car. Looking as though he's just maybe, has he given up now and is settling down into second place? We'll have to find out. As long as there's racing laps to go, I'm sure Ryan harper Ellen will be trying as hard as he possibly can. But for the moment, just looks as though James Pinkerton has the upper hand at the wheel of the race leading number 22 machine who's running Gen 2 bodywork for the first time this weekend. Mistake coming up towards Maggots for number five, Peter Devlin, who gets away with it rather, so he will be able to continue round, but just sort of missed his breaking point at Maggots. And at Luffield, we've got a car sitting in the middle of the circuit as the 9th, 10th and 11th place battle squeezes its way through. And Mark Williams manages to get past David Tagg there. And Chris Short is looking to squeeze his way through as well. Great fighting. We might be down towards the bottom of the top 10, but look at the battles that are going on. Mark Williams has waited forever to try and gain a place. And when he took the opportunity to go through, and when the door was open, also Chris Short squeezed his way through. So David Tagg losing two places there in one corner, just as they, by the look of things, came out of the yellow flag zone. And now Mark Williams has gained the place. Instantly he finds himself under pressure, but not from the man he's just taken it away from, from the other car that followed him through, that being Chris Short, who's looking to try and make amends from problems earlier on, which dropped him down through the order. There goes the number 51 car of Andrew Ritchie. He needs to watch his mirrors because the race leaders are starting to bear down on him. He's busy having his own little battle, but now he has got James Pinkerton looking to try and squeeze his way through. They come up towards the breaking air for Maggots and Beckett. James Pinkerton is just able to squeeze his way through and past Andrew Ritchie, who I think at the last minute saw that he was under pressure. The next back marker moves neatly out of the way on the Wellington straight, and that allows Ryan harper -Ellum to squeeze his way through. So the battle for the lead of the race is back on again all of a sudden as a result of the traffic. And there's more traffic that will need to be dealt with as well before too much longer. So they flick their way through Brooklyn's corner. These two cars now safely having been placed the lap down, but still continuing their own individual battle, that being Peter Devlin and the number 51 car in the hands of Andrew Ritchie. The race leaders are already on to another lap and still will have work to do. We've still got fights going on elsewhere as well down through the order. Mark Williams and Chris Short, having got past David Tagg a few laps ago, are resuming their battle once more. Race leaders having to thread their way through the traffic. James Pinkerton just, I think, compromised heading round through Cops Corner there as we ride on board with Ryan harper Allen, who's got a great run. Great shot of the leading pair being absolutely side by side up towards the breaking area for Maggots. And Ryan harper Allen has the inside line. James Pinkerton sees him coming, gives him room. The pair of them side by side through Beckett's corner. But as they come out and onto the Wellington straight, Ryan harper Allen just has his nose ahead. But more importantly, James Pinkerton is on the left-hand side of the circuit. So he's got the inside line when they come towards Brooklyn's corner, which is where they're heading now. Ryan harper Allen nose ahead but has the outside line. So James Pinkerton should go through and, in fact, does go back through to retake up the lead of the 
race. Great racing from this pair. Again, side by side, breaking as late as he can is Ryan Harperell. And you can see him working away at the wheel of the car. Turns in later to try to get a later apex and switch back on the exit. But instead, he's picked up the slipstream and the toe again as they head over the start finish line, ready to start yet another lap of the Silverstone National Circuit. These two have been pretty much inseparable in this race. They've been pretty much inseparable in qualifying, just a tenth of a second between them. There's not been a great deal between them all season, to be absolutely honest, and had it not have been for that retirement at Alton Park for Ryan Harper Ellum, the championship would be even closer. Nose to tail for the lead of the race. They turn their way through Beckett's once more onto the Wellington Strait. The clock is ticking. Time is running out here for Ryan Harper Ellum if he wants to try and do something to wrestle the lead of the race away from the grasp of James Pinkerton, who is desperate to try and hang on to it and score what for him would be his third victory of the season. But Ryan Harper Ellum has exactly the same thoughts. He's had two wins so far. He would desperately like a third, but for the moment is rather frustratingly, I would think, sitting there in second place out of Bluffield corner up towards Woodcut once more. James Pinkerton still continuing to lead the race, still under this intense pressure from Ryan Harper Ellum. The back markers have now been dealt with so they can roll their sleeves up and slug it out, the pair of them. They put the car in towards the fast right-hander at Cops Corner, turn one here at Silverstone. The aerodynamics of the SR1 working beautifully well, but for Ryan Harper Ellum, he's in the dirty air all of the time, and on a hot day, he needs to be careful he doesn't overwork the tyres, otherwise he may end up struggling towards the end of the race, which we're at now, and of course there's another race to come later on, round six of the championship later on this weekend. So there goes Peter Devlin, another couple of cars have now placed the lap on him. He's circulating at the tail end of the field, but has moved neatly out of the way and allowed our Fangio class leader, Julian Lay, to work his way through. And another small mistake down at Maggots and Beckett's for Peter Devlin, very similar to the one he did earlier on, got away with it. Look at this for the lead of the race, they're back together once more. James Pinkerton still under pressure from Ryan Harper Ellum, they turn their way out of Luffield corner and are going to chalk another lap into the book, but James Pinkerton continually is the man who leads the end of each particular lap. And now as they head over the start-finish line, well, time is definitely running out here for Ryan Harper Ellum. Both of them have driven superbly well, they've driven nose to tail, they've driven wheel to wheel, they've driven side by side, but have always been fair with each other, I've got to say. There's the number 11 car, that is Chris Short, looking to try and get ahead of David Tagg, and that would see him inside the top 10 if he could manage that. Over the start-finish line comes the number 17 machine, that's Gavin McAlpine, another one of the rookies in the field. There goes Julian Lay, the man who leads the Fangio class at this stage of the race, on course for what would be his first win in the Fangio Trophy. So, threading his way through the order. Still very busy out there on circuit. Andrew Ritchie trying to get out of the way of cars that are looking to try and place him a lap down. You can see as they head onto the Wellington Strait, that's the best opportunity for the traffic to work its way through and past the slower cars. Race leaders about to complete yet another lap. James Pinkerton still continuing to lead this race. There's more traffic potentially up the road that could come into play towards the end of the race. And that will be hopefully, as far as Ryan Harper Ellum is concerned, the catalyst for maybe a bit of change at the sharp end of this race. Out of Cops Corner onto the start of another 1.64 mile lap of the Silverstone National Circuit. Go the leading pair of cars. James Pinkerton has led every lap so far, but Ryan Harper Ellum has always, always been a very present danger field of cars threading our way through Cox Corner. That's the number 17 car of Gavin McAlpine. He's currently running sixth on the road. That wasn't for position the car he got past. That was Peter Devlin's car, the number five machine that he's moved out of harm's way and has now placed the lap on it. And there indeed goes the number 17 car of Gavin McAlpine. So he's the second of the rookies we've got on the field. The leading rookie is up in third place, which is Will Hunt, who is still some way adrift from the leading pair who are running out of time now to sort out who's going to win round five of the championship. James Pinkerton and Ryan Harper Ellum have, have pretty much been together for the whole race, but they're now about to start the last lap, and it is going to be still James Pinkerton that's going to lead on this last lap of the race. Is there another twist in the tail as yet? Ryan Harper Ellum has not given up his aspirations to try and win round five of the championship and secure his third win of the year, but James Pinkerton is desperate to try and hang on to this championship lead that he has. The extra point in qualifying for pole position went the way of Ryan Harper Ellum. And James Pinkerton has got the extra point for the fastest lap of the race so far as we go back on board with Ryan Harper Ellum. He's going to throw everything at it as they head down the Wellington Strait for the final time. He's in the slipstream 
And what can Ryan Harper Ellum do here? James Pinkerton hugs the left hand side of the circuit to protect the all important inside line for Brooklyn. So Ryan Harper Ellum switches to the outside of Brooklyn's corner to try and get the inside for Luffield. Can't quite do it there. James Pinkerton heads up towards Luffield corner and Ryan Harper Ellum is now going to try and squeeze his way at the inside. There's a little bit of contact between the pair of them, but just side by side contact. And they're still side by side coming out on the corner. The sprint to the line is going to decide this one. Ryan Harper Ellum almost, almost, almost alongside James Pinkerton on the charge to the line. There's more contact again and just six one thousandths of a second decides who wins round five of the 2018 radical SR1 Cup. That must be the closest SR1 Cup finish we've ever had since the championship started back in 2013. And James Pinkerton, by did he have to work for win number three of the season. Fair racing from them both. There was a little bit of rubbing on a couple of occasions, but both of them left each other enough room. And I'm sure both of them will be absolutely grinning from ear to ear after what was probably the best Radical SR1 Cup race we've ever had. Confirmation then of the results. James Pinkerton takes the win. Ryan harper Ellum is in second place and the leading rookie home is Will Hunt in third. Ross Elliott in fourth, head of Adish Radia in fifth place. Gavin McAlpine in sixth place. And in seventh place, his first win in the Fangio Trophy this year goes the way of Julian Lay. Richard Wilson, Mark Williams and David Tagg complete the top ten with Chris Short, Andrew Ritchie, Paul Clark and Peter Devlin, the last of the finishers. Made a mistake on the final corner, and Ryan was ready there, you know, to pounce. Came alongside me, and it was just a drag race to the start finish line. Luckily, I got it by whatever it was six one thousand. Yeah, close. <laughs> you want another win, but you won't want it that close. No, definitely not. <laughs> as long as it's racing like that, that was mega. It was good fun. Yeah, that was ridiculously close. One of the best races I've ever had. You know, James was was always right there, squeezing as much as you can, with just enough room. And um, whenever I threw one up the inside or outside, he was always just squeezing and giving enough room again so amazing racing and six thousandths I can't really complain you know <laughs> exciting race to say the least uh, those guys up front did superbly well to keep up with each other um, I lost my mirrors I lost all visibility behind me after turn one so it was just I had to go flat out for the whole race and just hope nobody could keep up but yeah no these guys in front just disappeared <laughs>